Hello, Rip the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all around the world. This is episode number 357. And I want to add Magnum onto the end of that because I think we have a powerful thing today. We're, we're loaded up today with the 357 Magnum of the Word of God. And I'm in the studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Wow, there's so much happened since we were in here last. It's just been one thing after another. and Almost and almost watching to take another vacation to see what happens next. <laughs> a lot of it good. Well, when... Uh, I want to tell you something funny first to give you a laugh. Um, a lot of times when we're on vacation, we just try to get caught up on work that we don't have time to do around the house. And this time um, over at Diggins, you know, we're going we're to uh, keep the tile floor in the fellowship hall for right now because we were just going to make sure that we had plenty of funds to do everything we wanted to do and, and get everybody in there. And so I, I had this bright idea. Well, they had a, had left a buffer there, and I'd actually used it to clean initially because they'd had um, like fire. yard sales yeah. and a bunch of stuff in there, so it was really heavy traffic. So initially, I cleaned it with that, no big deal. And I thought, hey, we can get over there and strip that and put wax on it so it looks nice till we, you know, have the yeah. – the uh, laminate floor put well, on she, there. You looked it up, and it's just astronomical how much they want. It was like a third. Well, it was it was enough that I thought we can do this. Yes. <laughs> and so anyway, that we started, and that uh, buffer quit, and so we went and rented one that was was smaller, um, powerful little thing. I called it the beast when we got, <laughs> but. I thought, oh, I like because I really like doing stuff like that. So I got you know everything, the cleaner and everything like that, and, and I started, I started trying to use that thing. And I'm telling you guys, it was like I was line dancing with a rhinoceros. I went over to the left, then I'd over to the right. And I had to yell at Mike, get out of the way. <laughs> It looked like something on America's yeah, Funniest Simple it, 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 I should have had a video. I mean, it swung you around. Oh my word! Like a rag swing doll. your partner around. <laughs> <laughs> Only I wasn't in the one swinging. But anyway, Mike was able to manhandle it. You know, he's taller and, and was able to manhandle it. And so I just I just had to do the mopping behind him and cleaning and everything. But that was something to see. <laughs> it's, I was kind of sore after that. <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, it it looks a lot better now. We, we spent, what, about maybe seven hours, six, seven hours all, all together stripping that. And, well, I, and I did some the day before, so it's, yeah. it's probably longer than that. But it was, it was good exercise for us, and uh, I'm not going to do any wax, the wax or anything like that till everybody's out of there. Um, I was hoping to get a, a video for you guys to let you see everything, but in the kitchen it's all done except where they put in the, the big sinks and the dishwasher. You can see underneath all the plumbing, and I asked the contractor if they would build, you know, a, a removable wall in case they need to get to the plumbing someday, but that it would look nice there. And so they've not got that done, so I'm going to wait till they get that done, and they're still working on your AV center. The, uh, yeah, the AV center, there's a several of the doors that the, uh, the people that they hired to build the doors messed up a couple of times, mm -hmm. and we're still waiting on a couple of doors, and we're waiting on uh, that. Uh, we're also waiting on... Uh, uh, some of the electrical stuff to be finished up. So it's it's not much, but I just can't wait to be able to show you guys what it looks Hopefully like. Hopefully in a couple of weeks. By the, yeah. by the 15th, everything should be done and they're out of there. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, so let's talk about what has went on. Uh, wow. <laughs> the Supreme Court. Oh, my word. Uh, we've had several victories there, and I'll just talk about some. Um, the number one was Roe versus Wade. If anybody knew how huge that was, you would not believe the mercy that will be afforded the United States because of that. Not that, that there's not going to be some bad things happen, but the mercy. Now we can, we can see that there's a tide turning. I mean, this, this took this orchestration did. of Almighty God and everybody yeah. involved, but to get the people on there, that would strike this down and actually look at the constitution and say, is this, right. is this, right. is, is it a right to terminate your child as a part of your constitutional right? And you know, they, and my goodness, there's, there's situations in everything that, you know, just make people question. I know how horrible it would be for a young person that would get pregnant by an abuser. I understand that man, do I, but we can't, 
because of a situation that would be quite rare, actually. Yeah. Or even the the um, a mother being in danger because that's very rare. And, and I think that they that most of them will make an allowance for situations, but. This is so huge. Do you realize that realize this will cut off the power source of Moloch? Yes. <laughs> and all of the other principalities that have been absolutely uh, puffed up with occult power because of, of the blood, the innocent bloodshed? Now, the, the, there are several things I think is coming into place with all this. Number one, and this, this is something the left has done ever since Roe versus Wade. If you go to Democrat-held states... Uh, you know, they'll, they'll always quote, you know, to, to save the mother's life for rape or incest, which are all uh, a very, very small percentage. But to obfuscate how small it is uh, in Democrat-held states, they forbid them asking, you know, why are you getting an abortion? Is it kind of, you know, is it because you don't want the pregnancy or is it these other circumstances? There's only one or two states that are that have been historically Republican control, like Florida, that maintains those statistics that they will ask, and I mean it. It's like point uh, zero zero something uh, of those that are rape, incest, or to save the mother's life, but to obfuscate that they hide it. Now we also need to realize that the fight's not over. That this is going to be done at the state level. Mm-hmm. That the enemy that we're fighting. When, when you look at the ideology of conservatives, or our, our, for a conservative, truth is paramount. Okay, truth, standing up for the word of God, uh, and, and there, there is a whole mindset that comes from our Judeo-Christian heritage, something that we have been fighting for. The left have rejected all of that, so much so that the, the, even the quote-unquote, I'm doing air quotes here, of churches that are liberal have literally come out and said that it is... It is part of their religious duty to uh, to support abortion. Well, if it's if you're serving the God of the Bible, it's your duty to protect life. But if you're serving Molech or Baal or many of the, of all the other pagan gods, and even here in Missouri, when they were trying to pass here a couple of years ago, and I document this in my second book, that they were that the Missouri was trying to stop abortion. Uh, they were sued by the Church of Satan saying this is a religious right that we have to, to, to have abortions. They, they considered it a sacrifice and a religious right. And so there's, there, there are ideology conflicts here. And with the left, the end justifies the means. And what that means is where a conservative will have limits, like let's use the court of law, let's, let's sit down and, and debate and, and, and talk out these things openly on the left, uh, they can use violence. They will use whatever whatever means possible to get this done. To include just like what we have seen, they have, they were threatening Supreme Court justices. Uh, they're they're trying to do a lot of things. So we, we really need to keep all this in prayer. Well, and they they've already begun to say, okay, this is not um, a, illegal on a federal level. So they're trying to get it to where if a state that that has already outlawed it has federal land that they can do abortions yeah. there. I mean, the, the bloodlust of this is so apparent. You know, they, they make it all look like it's for the health of the woman and things like that. It, it's just a sham. That's just all it is. It's a bunch of rhetoric that's produced from the kingdom of darkness to, to confuse people, to get everybody to buy it. And I've, I've been kind of shocked at the number of pastors that don't even address it. I've been shocked at the number of, of Christians that don't agree with it. And well, this shows boy, how, it I, shows how far we have been moved how, away from the yeah, word of God. So far away, so far away. But and, there was uh, the the other uh, situation that they addressed was the coach that had prayed and he was fired. He won. He won. So the huge win there. Also had a Second Amendment win. The in Supreme Court limits EPA in curbing power plant emissions. Mm-hmm. See, this is this was all part of the evil agenda to take this nation down. You know, there's a reason they want to take this nation down is because it does have those Christian values from the beginning, and that that was the reason that that God blessed the nation. It is, and, and, and not that there weren't mistakes made. My goodness, and what 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 is the quickest way to to destroy an economy and to subjugate a people is you control the energy. And uh, one of the things I've, I've, I've uh, listened to the clip, I should have saved it. Here in a recent interview 
our current president said that the high fuel prices was a part of the establishing of the liberal new world mm-hmm. order. Yeah. So, in, so we already see what this liberal new world order wants to do. They're going to suppress and control the people. And so that's something else that we need to be in prayer about. And, you know, with, with this whole thing with abortion and, and different things, Mary, what I'm seeing prophetically is God is using this to draw a line in the sand that the states that outlaw abortion and stand for life are going to be in a position to be blessed by God. These other states, we're going to begin to see God judge them. Yeah, And it, it's exactly it is. what we were talking about of this spot judgment. God is, mm-hmm. is saying, listen, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to set this thing up that as a nation, you're going to have clear lines of delineation so that you understand I'm going to bless those mm-hmm. who follow my word and stand up for life, and I'm going to begin judging those. And so uh, one of the things that we need to do, especially for the states that are, that are standing up for life, we need to pray for them, and especially if you're a citizen of that state, you pray over that state, begin claiming the, the, the blessings of Deuteronomy yes. 8. Uh, I even think that this dr- uh, drought situation that's going on right now is is a direct uh, a direct assault most likely by china and by russia because they're when you look at scalar energy and and the use of those type of weapons that control weather uh and uh, tesla you know ended up selling those to russia so they're liking their their fourth fifth sixth generation some even say as high as 20th generation of using that kind of technology where our harp systems are probably maybe fifth generation it, it's like, you know, here in Missouri, it's like this, we went from more rain than we can handle to where somebody just shut off the spigot. And so what we need to do for those states, we need to say, Father, our states stood up mm-hmm. for life. That's right. And Father, give us rain, give it in moderation so that so that we can have the crops, we can have the hay, we can have what we need. And if we'll begin interceding, we're going to start seeing this dynamic change in the states that stood up for life. Uh, that's true. I believe it with all my heart. Um I was just floating on a cloud here for, for so many days, just rejoicing that that God could turn this around. What has been decades of fighting for, and and I and it couldn't have it wouldn't have been done without the prayers of the people, Mike. God's people Absolutely. have been have been diligently praying and seeking God praying for and decades, laboring yes, and laboring and fasting, and for and so look at what God's done. That's that's the main thing here is is this would not have been done without Almighty God's intervention. And uh, <clears throat> the way I look at it is, man, this is a turning point. We've got some momentum here, but we can't stop praying now. We've got to pray even harder. We've got to fast. We've got to to keep this moving forward because the more that we can get the this turned around, the more God's presence will come. You know, we're, we're to a place um, that... It's, it's like some instances in the Bible we're going to talk about here in a minute. But, you know, even today, we've come in on the 4th of July to do the podcast because we have to be at Diggins tomorrow for um, uh, some kind federal of protection federal protection. That's right. More of the alarm system. Uh, and so, you know, when you look at the 4th of July, Chris Pinto did a really good job of lining it out, how the reason that they chose the 4th of July was Sirius is lined up. Um, yeah, there, there's there's so much that that lines up with with how they would do the occult cities and the mystery religions yeah. lines up perfectly. And even there, I was reading an article by um, what's his name, David Ovison, who's actually joined the Masons after he he thought all these things that they did yeah, after, were just after wonderful. After he wrote and, his book on on, on um, Washington D.C., but I mean he lays it out, and I mean with accuracy on what they have done to lay it out and how uh, three of the um, you know, they, they laid it out like with the constellations to form like a triangle, and which would be um, an opening. It would be. You know, it would be like a portal that they've laid it out. So well, there's, there's several so portals along that they with, have in D.C. Along with like the um, early awakening where there was that great revival and, and God was doing things and had plans for this nation, you had the Masonic agenda going right along with it. Whether they knew it or not, they were following the agenda of the enemy. Well, I know, I know part of why they did what they did. Now, I'm, I'm going to read this, this this one quote from David Owison. It said, Washington is unique and it's magical when it happens. The stars emerge in the dusk in Greek and Egypt. Temples and other sacred sites were oriented toward the stars, but I know of nowhere else on earth, in the earth, where a city is oriented toward a specific sunset. Mm-hmm. Everything that they did, when, when you look at 
when, when the United States was established, all the abuses that we were escaping from in Europe was based upon a misinterpretation and a misuse of the word of God of the divine right of kings to rule. And you had that, and what they ended up doing is they looked at the Vatican because you, one of the things that um, Chris Pinto documents over and over again is, is Washington, D.C. back then even was called the Little Vatican. Because when you, when you look at the Vatican, they, they use mystery religion things to set up uh, St. Peter's Cathedral. You have the obelisk out mm-hmm. front. You know, it's, it's the same thing. The only thing is we, we made a bigger obelisk than the one they had. They actually brought one in from Egypt. It was one of the needles of, of Cleopatra, I believe. And, and set it up, and one of the things that even the Masons obfuscate, Mary, is when you go to the very foundation of the Washington Monument, it's exactly 666 feet mm-hmm. tall. Okay. Kind of odd, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just all these different things. But they, they rejected the divine right of kings to rule, and so it's like, you know, this was the misuse of the Bible, so they went back to a more ancient mm-hmm. way like of Egyptian. establishing power. Yeah. And so there, there, there are things out of the mystery religions that, are, that have permeated Washington, D.C. from this very conception, and we, and we need to realize that. We do. It's, this is another quote from his article. It says, Lastly, the cornerstone of the Washington Monument was laid on July 4th, 1848, while the moon was in Virgo. Construction was stalled for more than 30 years and officially began again on August 7th, 1880. Uh, at that moment, the star Spica, Spica, I've never known that star before, so I don't know how to pronounce it. The most important star in the constellation of Virgo was rising over the eastern horizon. Everything they did was specific for the, you know, what in the old days they would have done for pagan rituals. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's just what it was. It was pagan rituals that they did. So no wonder our nation is in such a mess yeah, and Tom Horn even goes back to the, you know, you could be the king of Egypt and not be a pharaoh. Mm-hmm. That there was a specific ritual they did, and I believe it was in, in uh, uh, Lex something or other, that uh, the, the, the full name of in Egypt, but they, they had it all set up, and it took a domed rotunda, and it took a, a, a phallic symbol, that when they went through the ritual, the king took on the spirit of Osiris, and he became Osiris and the earth. Mary, since George Washington, Masons in secret have been doing that exact same mm-hmm. ritual over every single president of the United yeah, States. That's why he is always standing with the rotunda behind him and the obelisk in front of him when he takes his oath of office. Right. It's, it's really something when you start looking at this. And, you know, it's why we pray on the 4th of July because uh, Doc Marquis said how they laid it out. You know, it's 13 days after the summer solstice, and it, it's a very specific reason that they chose that date. Now, we all just look at it as the uh, birthday of America. And day for barbecue. And, um, and I am very, let me tell you, I am very grateful for, for the nation and that uh, I am so happy to be here in this nation because we have enjoyed liberties based on on uh, God's mercy for sure yes because God saw what they were doing I mean this isn't but he he has always been working with his people as he is all over the place he works with his people to get things turned around and so so what we're in the beginning of I believe is that turnaround that, well, that remember that God told me there was going to be a smackdown coming. This is the beginning of the smackdown. I think if we will continue to pray, we won't give up. We're going to be diligent. I think we're going to see one thing after another overturned. Oh, and because the more we can we can voice our opposition to this and stand against the evil agenda, the more God's presence will come. Because we've we've made it impossible for God's presence to come. He can come in the life of a believer. He can come in the presence of of His people as they they worship. But as as a nation, we're in big trouble. We are. You know, years uh, here a couple of years ago, I was doing an interview with L.A. Marzuli. And L.A. talked about it's like even with getting prayers answered, different things. He said there's like a, in the Old Testament, you talk about this like a brass dome mm-hmm. over the United States. Well, it's because of these things it is. that that brass dome was was uh, was established in the spirit realm. And as we, we begin to change these things, it's making holes in that dome. And where those holes are, revival yeah, can begin it. to pour out. Because, that's guys, it. we need to realize that from the very beginning of this nation, there were two agendas— there were two destinies. 
God had a destiny for the people that originally came over here. They dedicated the land to God. The original pilgrims, when they came over, they said that the law of Moses was going to be the law of the land. They dedicated it to Yahweh Elohim and said that Jesus was going to be the king over this land. And then you had the Masons begin to come over. We, we, we understand this even with uh, Sir Francis Bacon's book on, on uh, the New Atlantis. That's what they viewed uh, the North American continent. In fact, they knew it was here before Columbus ever sailed. Okay, They knew it was here. They had plans. And there's two destinies that are still fighting right now in America over this land. Now, the difference is... The kingdom of darkness never sleeps. There's a great book out called Socialists Never Sleep, and it because socialism is birthed out of the mystery religions mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. They are absolutely dedicated from generation to generation to generation, pouring in their fortunes and their energies to get what they want to pass, while the church over and over again falls asleep and then falls asleep and falls asleep. And we fell asleep in the helm back in the 60s and let mm-hmm. Roe versus Wade be established. We let them take prayer out of school. We did a lot of things that we shouldn't have done. But you know what? The remnant are waking up and saying, there's about enough of this that I'm going to have. That's it. And as as we do that, God is going to begin establishing kingdom yeah, order. He will. And, there, and there's going to be a line drawn in the sand. There's going to be those that that really are like the sons of Zadok, the sons of righteousness that are that are, are the priesthood of Almighty God, and then the compromisers that are secretly serving Baal in one fashion or another. They're going to be revealed in the days ahead. They will be. He's exposing them right now. Um. I was going to read a little section I I saw on somebody uh, talking about Sirius, and they're obviously into astrology. It says, uh, and right now, why they call it dog days is Sirius is lined up, and it lines up with the sun. It says, Sirius is a Bohemian star, and when the sun is with Sirius, it opens a doorway to this stargate so we can access the wisdom found in many multidimensional realms, Sirius and the sun illuminate. Sounds yes. like something occult, doesn't it? This includes the knowledge and remembrance of our starry origins. From now until September equinox, the light codes from Sirius are amping up and are worth tuning into, even though Sirius will not be visible in the morning sky until around August 7th, zodiacal cross quarter each year. And so this this time of year, first of all, we can we can ask forgiveness for any occult connections to this day, and any celebrations that are connected to an occult origin, whether people know it or not. Father, we we plead the blood of Jesus and ask forgiveness for every sin that would be against you, and we ask that your mercy would cover all the people in that are involved in in anything today that is connected to the occult that they don't know about. We just ask for your mercy in Jesus' name. Yes. Uh, because a lot of times, oh, little kids get so hurt, you know, with, with things on uh, 4th of July. So I pray over that every year. And this this kind of thing, see, is there all the time. But what put it on, um, you know, it's like nitroglycerin is when these abortions started. Yes. Because what they used to could only do in a limited number of child sacrifice in hidden places. Again, down a mass. I mean, massive. And so look, you can just look at that from that time frame of when that started to today. Would you ever have imagined this much change could come in this time? It's this is, and so now it's going to be continuing in the, in the other states. And I even heard them talking of crazy ways of taking public funds to, give women travel to these states where they can get abortion. I thought, my word. Yeah, even corporations are beginning yeah, to do that. So, it's, so uh, we've, we've got to pray like never before. And in the, in the meantime, just, just kind of get yourselves ready because now this will be the turning point of who's going to be safe, who's not. Yes. And so we've got to really be praying. And this is a, a specific um, occult time anyway. It's, it's a high time in the occult and it, Based on when things fall, um, Tisha B'Av is the time when the temple was destroyed twice, twice. and and the on occult the day, used yeah. that that time period to try to kill Christians because we're the temple now, yeah. and they do all kinds of rituals and defilements of the word, and you know just like they have that you talked about a, a pharaoh, they they have set up with um, the occult usage of of the bible and jewish things and they that's why it's it's the greatest defilement in my opinion for somebody to take the word of god 
and defile it. I, I think it's it's not only a a time of of attack on Christians, but I think they'll even. I've always wondered if the next major attack on Israel will be on Tisha B'av again. Uh, so I mean, there's there's that that's why you know Tisha B'av we mark uh, not as a not as a holy day to recognize, but as a day to be in the prayer for yeah, protection prayer. of God's people. Absolutely, and then Lamas is a, a on the witch's calendar for August sixth. And, and so there's just a lot of things lining up this year, and they, they especially use times where they overlap. Like if one occult thing overlaps another and another, yeah. and heck, the, you know, Hecate. Hecate and all these things that, yeah, they, the that they do. Of, the God of the crossroads, God yeah. of the Yeah, when they came after me in 2005, it was one thing after another. It was like they waited till they could get the ultimate power um, to get that done. And, not, and again, not because I'm important, just because they were going to make an example of me that you don't ever leave this stuff. You don't ever, ever turn your back on the kingdom of darkness. If you've been born into something, you're going to stay there. And, um, God, God showed up and and he protected me. And so while this is so important that Mary's sharing Sirius, there's also another name for it. It's the Luciferian star. Mm -hmm. It's the dog star. And those in the mystery religions believe that it's, Cirrus is the reason that there's life on planet Earth because of the magnetic field that it releases and, and the portal that it opens. And so th- this is like a time that there's a portal open to the kingdom of darkness. You know how we talk about during the feast, it's like uh, during the, 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 uh, the days of awe. The king is in the field, and that's like an open door to where we can really uh, not only seek heaven but to hear from God, and, and the king is, is here to hear our pleas in, in a special way. That is what these these dog days of Cirrus is for those in the kingdom of darkness, that they have an open portal of power. Now look at now look at what they've done with our culture, Mary. Even even church attendance will be greatly down in the summer because everybody gets in vacation mode. While they're going into turbocharged, mm-hmm. they have programmed even much of the church. Yeah, go on vacation. Go on and, vacation and mode. Just go to sleep. Go to just sleep. Just go sleep. Yeah. And so we need to we need to reverse that trend. Well, and we and we have there's uh, some specific things in the Bible we can look at. We've talked about them before, but but because we've moved away from God's word, we've followed a pattern that we can see in the Word of God of what happens when you're disobedient and irreverent. Yes. And um, it results in curses. And so God told me to look again at Obed-Edom. I've read that a lot of times. And so I was I was looking back at that. And, you know, uh, David had Obed-Edom's house, the place where they took the Ark of the Covenant, because they were trying to move it. Uh, and that's when Yuza died, because it uh, they were moving it not according to the word, because Exodus 25 prescribed how to move the ark, and they weren't moving it in that way. And so it, it jostled on the cart, and he put his hand up and touched it, and he died. And so David was upset about that, and so he had it taken to Obed-Edom. And I was kind of confused because I, I looked up Obed-Edom, and I looked in the back of, to see all every reference to him, and it said that um, he was a Levite, but then they said that he was a Philistine. And I thought, well, that can't be. So I looked it up, and and um, there was a, a pretty good explanation. I thought it says a contemporary of David, um, after the death of Yuza, the ark was deposited not far from kirath Jerum in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. When the ark was taken up to Jerusalem, um, and Obed-Edom was made one of its special guardians. It says, apart from the Gittite, a Levite, Obed-Edom is mentioned nine times in First Chronicles. And it says that it is normally assumed, even by conservatives, that Obed-Edom was a Philistine from Gath. Though opinions differ whether there was a Levite of the same name as well. So there could have been another one. Uh, but it, it messed it up in the one Bible I had, though, because it said he's a Levite. And then it, in another place it said he's a Philistine. The reason that you know it's not a Philistine is David knew what happened when they took uh, the Philistines took the ark and put it in there with that that uh, statue of um, Dagon, and it fell over and bowed in, in front of the ark, and it's the face and palms of the hands came off. And then not only that, but all the people of Ashdod that were there got cursed with tumors, which I think is they put in the side notes it was hemorrhoids, which is no fun thing. Um, <laughs> but but Can you imagine an entire nation waking up need, needing preparation H? But I think... <laughs> <laughs> I think what um, 
God was showing me in this is is there's a same pattern here. Yuza died because, first of all, they had a lack of knowledge of how that ark was supposed to be transported. In other words, there was a complete failure of the Levitical order that they didn't know or they could not even instruct the king because after this, David actually goes back to them and said, you research and find mm-hmm. out how we're supposed to do this. And so they had lost the knowledge. Those that were supposed to be the keepers of the word couldn't even instruct the king on how to take care of the ark. And then Almost con- like today's church. Right. And then consequently... There was a reverence. Yes. And so what have we had in in our nation? We've had a total lack of the truth of the word. It's been so skewed that in some of these churches, I don't even know that somebody could find the truth. And, And then because of that, if you don't know the word, if you don't know what you're supposed to to follow and you don't know obedience, then you're gonna automatically be irreverent. Yeah. And so then there are curses. I I remember years ago. Uh, back when we were over in Marshfield and I would have the Wednesday night just with the men, uh, Micah brought a couple of guys that worked with him at Positronic that were Christians and stuff. And I mean, we, we would have open yeshiva. And uh, these guys were charismatic Pentecostal guys, supposed to be spirit-filled. And one of them, he said, he goes, I'm, he says, I'm feeling something during this meeting that I have not felt in years. And we all looked at him and said, what? He says, conviction. And you know, that was the last time he came back. Because he felt conviction. In other words, he had been going to church for years in a spirit-filled church and had never had conviction. You know what yeah. that means? The Word of God's not being preached. Yeah, we're supposed to be convicted. Yeah. And I, I want to be convicted if I've messed up. Oh, me too. I want to know so I can get it right. I don't want to live in curses. We lived in curses so many years. And you think, well, a Christian can't, can't be cursed. Yes, we, you can. <laughs> you can walk yourself so far out of the kingdom of God and have so many, many... Um, evil spirits that have been with your families and things like that, that it's just override. It is. And I've seen so many people try to take that position that we're so cursed as this. You have gotten so used to the curses. You don't even know what really yeah. being blessed and by God is. And you know is. what people say? They'll say, well, this is just how it is. Yeah. And this is suffering for the Lord. Well, we're going to suffer anytime we're a Christian because there's persecution. There's going to be people say bad things about you. You're going to have all kinds of stuff go on, but we're supposed to be overcomers. And that's what we learned Yes, is that we didn't have to live in that horrible place. In the process, we discovered the commandments of God that yes. closed the door to the enemy. That's it. And, and in that, before that, then God had given me the prayer to ask him to put the blood of Jesus over the doors in my life that I didn't even know I had. Cause I mean, I was trying to change everything. I was, I was doing everything I could to try to get my life lined up with the Word, but there was a whole ton of stuff I didn't even know was there. Yeah. Do you know the neat story about Obed-Edom? When you, even when you look at the controversy, replace Philistine with Gentile. The Ark of the Covenant found its home in a Gentile's home that reverenced God, that brought blessing. We're going to see that in the church again. Well, how could he be a, a Levite, though? Well, I mean, there's there's many different ways that we can say that. Let's say that his parents were god fearers. Okay, even though he was Philistine by descent, he was a Gentile, he was a god fearer and, and his parents, when he was born, and gave him to the Levites and saying, this is our firstborn son, raise him this way. Uh, there, 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 there may be precedents for that uh, if, if you were a god fearer uh, and, and that he, you know, and he may have even been circumcised after that to become fully Jewish, but he still maintained his, his heritage that he was a Gentile that had been grafted in. But, a, was, but he would have to have been of the tribe of Levi, though. Not, not, when, not when you look at the firstborn. The firstborn, uh, and all, all, first, all, all sons of Levi were Levites, okay? But when you look at the, the for, there was a ransom to be paid because all firstborn belonged to God. If you weren't of the tribe of Levi, you had one of two choices. You could either pay a ransom. There was a ransom fee so many days after the child was born. Or like Samuel, it, that he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't officially of the tribe of Levi, but his mother said, listen, God bless me with this child. He now belongs to him. So when after he was weaned, she gave him to the Levites, and that ransom was never paid, so mm-hmm. he was considered a priest. And so we, there, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, but I, I think it's a type and shadow of there, there is going to come a time, guys. And, it, you know, you always look at 
Paul said that the Gentiles were supposed to provoke the Jews to jealousy, and I've heard some say, you know, God's going to make us so rich that we're going to... No, that'll never happen. Just forget all that garbage. When we house the presence of God, whenever you get... I remember years ago when I was in the military, and there was one guy that we were really trying to lead to the Lord. He was Jewish, and his family was very wealthy, and he knew uh, that if he became a Christian, he was cut off from that wealth. His family would have a funeral for him. He had been dead to them, okay? And I would argue theology with him and argue theology with him, but every once in a while I got him to go to church. He would sit and weep like a baby during the praise and worship because that Jew knew the presence of Almighty God. He knew his heart burned Mm -hmm. because the throne of God was being established on the praises of his people. The Ark of the Covenant was being established in that place because of the praise and the worship. There, there, there are several things that are going on right now in Israel, and, and uh, Carl Koch talks about this. He, he, God has actually had him make friends with many of the leading rabbis over in Israel. And they keep on telling him that they're seeing prophecy fulfilled, and we're thinking, okay, is it the rebuilding of the temple? Is it this? Is it that? And they go to an obscure one that a Gentile would never pay attention over the prophets, that Gentiles are coming to Israel speaking Hebrew that are beginning to teach Torah to the rabbis. That is a fulfillment yeah. of prophetic scripture. And it, they're saying, we're seeing scripture. Uh-huh. FIFA said, we have gotten so far off in our traditions, we don't even know Torah anymore. And it's the spirit-filled Hebrew-speaking Christians that are coming in and teaching the rabbis, here's how you keep the commandments of God by the spirit of God. You see, there's, 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 there's this Obed-Edom thing going on in the church right now that we have got to establish that reverence for God, that reverence for his presence, so that ark, his ark, his ark represents the throne. That's that, that was the throne of God in the earth. That's what that represented. And when we establish Jesus as absolute king, I stand before him, and, and, and I bow before him, and I bow before nobody else. He is my king. I answer to him. He is the lawgiver. He is the law enforcer. I mean, we, we even got the way that we do uh, the, the, the executive branch, the uh, judicial branch, and the legislative branch are all based on a scripture that said all three of these were going to be placed on the shoulders of Messiah. Mm. That's where our founding father yeah. got that. Yeah, that's true. And that's the king that I serve. And I am faithful to his throne, I am faithful to his word, I am faithful to his commandments, and I am faithful to the leading of his spirit. When that happens, that reverence is reestablished, our homes can become like the homes of Obed-Edom. Yeah, where the blessings flow. Where the blessings flow. And we're actually starting to see men and women that are that have done that, that are going back over to Israel and giving instruction that the Levites can't even give. Isn't that something? Yes. Well, I, that was the other thing that God told me as I was praying is that, that we need to um, expect to walk in the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. Yes. And that's going to be, that's gonna be a, a great turnover. There's going to be a turnover of wealth. There's gonna be, because we're going to need a lot of money because if, if we're going to say no abortions, we've got to make sure that there's a place for the mothers and the babies. Yes. And be willing to roll up our sleeves right. and open up our wallets. And, and say, so, hey. so that's why, in in my opinion, this is the time of a transfer of wealth. And it sure doesn't look like it, does it? But, but I think that's coming because God is going to give funds where there can be the places where these babies can be born and be taken care of. And, and I, I, I think there's going to be blessings to the place, and I, yeah. I think it's going to I think it's going to end up being so so stark difference. There come people are going to say. How come you're blessed over here and, and we have drought over here or we have this over right. here? And we're going to say it because we honor the God of the Bible. Right. Because we can, we can pray where there's drought and, see, and see God override it, even if they're doing the, the harp and they're, and they're spraying things and that. No matter what they're doing, God can override that. And that is the most comforting thing. That's the power of the kingdom. Is that no kingdom. matter what yeah. goes on, no matter what technology they have, no matter what the these high-level principalities have done, our God is greater. It is. You know, there's another thing that it kind of goes along at the same way. And this, I'm, this is out of a chapter that I'm writing in, in The Kingdom Warrior. You, you look at 
when Israel, Judah was coming out of Babylonian captivity, okay, and they go back in and they're, they're freed in 538, they go back to Jerusalem, and they try to rebuild the temple, and I mean all hell breaks loose. Everything the enemy could do to stop them from building that temple and getting their priesthood reestablished. They used economics. They went and and told lies to the king to where the king said, I don't know about these Jews rebuilding this temple. You know, I I let them go, but now I've got second thoughts, all these different things. And so they got to the place, Mary, they gave up. Let's let's, let's just try to survive. Isn't that what a lot of the body of Christ, let's just survive. It's just so hard. Let's just survive. But in 520, a prophet named Haggai comes on the scene. And he says words like this. He says, you know why you have, why you sow and you don't have and you put money in your, in your, in your purses, but it's like there's holes in the bottom and they fall out. It's because you've let God's temple not be rebuilt. He walked, he said, you know, it's like, dude, 21 years we've been trying and we can't do it and and every and, and we, we if either either it's economic fighting or we're fighting with the king of, of Babylon or, or we're, we're fighting with our neighbors that it's, it's constant fighting constant fighting constant fighting the prophetic brought a fresh anointing to get it done and what's That's interesting right. is when Haggai came and said listen boys we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to get this thing done Mary five years it was done what they couldn't do yeah. five is the number of grace the prophetic Kicked brought in. the grace yes. to get her done oh i like that and see i, I kind of think there's that's almost connected even with my last book god is saying listen if you reestablish the priesthood mm-hmm. i'll make you warriors oh, well, like because that. it was after that that they rebuilt the wall so that you could have the watchers on the wall you, know, you can't have watchers if you ain't got no wall for them to be on the top yeah. of you know for them to look and God is saying, listen, be like Obed-Edom. Reverence my throne, reverence my word, reverence my commandment, reverence my spirit. Do not, and this, this is a New Testament commandment, do not grieve the spirit of God. Do not, you be sensitive to him. You do yeah, not grieve that's him. That's good preaching. And if we do that, we'll have the blessings. You know, all of Israel watched, and, and the Bible says that everything that Obed-Edom had was blessed, everything. He had blessings run out of his ears. Maybe his neighbors didn't, but he did. Every, 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 one, of his, every one of his cows began to give him calf to have a calf. I mean, he, he just increased in every single way. Why? And they, you, you, can you imagine the shalom, the peace of God that would be in the house where the throne of God is established? Mm, it'd be wonderful. Well, I'm sure the people there at Ashdod were were looking at this. <laughs> yes, and and God, you know. Is, God, you know, God is saying, "Listen, establish that priesthood. Make make your home. Make your home a place for the Spirit of God to be. Make your churches a place that the Spirit of God would be. It's not about entertainment. It's about giving reverence to God, learning His Word, and making room for the Holy Spirit to do His thing." And to never grieve him by our carnality. Never grieve him. But you know, you know what makes you know what makes the Holy Spirit happy? I mean this almost dancing happy. Is when his spirit comes, he brings conviction to sin, and crucifixion of flesh begins to take place and mm-hmm. repentance. And because we have you see, part of his part of his job in the earth, number one, he needs to convict us of sin so he can bring us to Jesus. Then he needs to instruct us into truth. And then he's going to loosen anointing because the Apostle Paul said, we have been predestined to be conformed into the image of Jesus, to make us like Jesus, to make us like our king. It says, you know what? I don't do anything unless my father says to do it. I, don't, I won't do anything unless I'm seeing him do it. Unless I have heard from heaven, I'm not doing it. That's the way the believer, that, that's walking in the Spirit. That's, that's following the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's having that Ark of the Covenant established in your hearts, in our homes, in every part of our being. And, and that's the goal for us. In, in the days ahead, there's going, to be a, there's going to be a stark contrast between the Temple of Dagon and where the Ark of the Covenant is established and God's throne is established. I mean, really established, not just in name. 
You know, God doesn't care about the name of a denomination. He could care less about that. But what he cares about is what that congregation is doing, what that preacher is doing. Is he being a true shepherd? Is he preaching the unfiltered, undiluted word of God? And and are the people respecting God the way that they're supposed to? Are they trying to honor him by the life they live and walking in the commandments of God by the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit? If that's there, that place is going to be blessed. And we could even be like Isaac, that we can sow in famine and receive a hundredfold return. I believe it. I believe we're going to see it. Uh, That's going to get the attention of the unsaved. It's going to get the attention of a lot of the church. Why is my church dying on the vine? Well, well, yours is, and I, I'm not talking about building big mega churches, guys. I, I think the day of the mega church is about over. But what I'm seeing are churches of two or three hundred that instead of us concentrating on building these monolithic buildings, we're building powerful believers. That's it. And train them up and send them out. Train them up, send them out. And replicate it over and over and over again. It can come in and refreshing. You know, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, years ago when I, I was over in Germany, we had a group come up from uh, Paul Young Guy Cho's church, and they were doing the cell group thing. And he said, he goes, I know where we're sitting in, in, in South Korea, that communist China could take over any day. And he said, the first thing they'll do is they'll come out and wipe out every pastor. He said, what they don't know is through home cell groups, I have 100,000 pastors right now in China that they don't even know about. And I have more than that now in Korea. And he said, they'll come, and he said, the, the, he said, I'm the official pastor. He said, they'll wipe me out. But he said, it, it's, it's almost like um, how you have these, these cell groups, you know, and the covert operations type of thing. He said, I've got them in every city. He said, I've got them, in there, and they're, they're preparing the saints in secret. And today, one of the things that the Communist Party is really afraid of is they're on the verge of being a few communists that are trying to rule over a nation that's following Jesus Mm. because Christianity is growing in leaps and bounds. Right now, communism is the minority in China. There's a small, you know, a couple million ruling, what is it, 1.8 billion or or some ridiculous, it's it's almost 2 billion people living in China. And, And that area of the world is the highest density of people. And the people are becoming Christian while the communists are worrying about struggling to maintain their power. Mm. And I think it has a lot to do with other pastors that were visionaries like, like Paul Young Cho that said, you know what, we're going to have cell groups all over China. We're going to have cell groups all over Asia. We're going to have cell groups to where in the homes the Ark of the Covenant is established. And you begin leading neighbors to Jesus. And it's, it's always about building people. It's not never about just building buildings. It's about building people. And you can't do it in, in a 20-minute sermon. And you can't do it without the presence of the God coming in a mighty way. Oh, yeah. Because that's, that's what uh, we're preparing. I mean, that's no matter what different purpose God's using you for right now, we're all preparing for a great outpouring of the Spirit of God. Uh, I was I was talking with Dr. Mike Spaulding about the upcoming conference and stuff, and here on our same page, listen, this this is going to be the county outline. You know, I'm going to speak this time, you're going to speak this time, Mary's going to speak this time, with one caveat. We want the Spirit of God to show up to the place, just like at the dedication of Solomon's temple, that the priests could not stand to minister to the people because God was there. When God shows up, take the schedule, throw it out the window, because if God begins to move... We're going to let him move until it's finished. That's right. Looking forward to it. Oh, looking forward to it. (laughs) We're looking forward to seeing you guys, too. I get so excited when somebody sends me an email and says, we're planning on being there. I say, yay. (laughs) Yeah, we're hoping here in the next couple of weeks to get the official dates up and have where you can go online. and Yeah. uh, Because this is, we're we're limited. We have about 150 seats. No, it's not. It's going to be more than 150. Well, 150, I think we're going to have them have 200 chairs or something like that. 200, and then I've counted for the our group that's yeah, here. The our group that's here. And uh, so we'll have online registration. That way we also know how many to fix food for. Got to know that. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we might have to start splitting them biscuits or something, you know. <laughs> Never uh, split a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> unless it's Poor in gravy. half. gravy. <laughs> unless it's in half for butter and jam, you know what <laughs> I mean. Uh, guys, we're, we're, we're so looking forward to it. We know 
uh, that God is in our midst, that God is doing something. I, I'm getting to the place, Mary, where I, I go over there almost every morning and I walk and I pray. And any more part of my praying is I just, I'm just praising God that it is turning out so wonderful. Look, God, look at what you did. I didn't think this then. I, I looked at this thing. I thought, dear Lord, what a mess. This is going to be such a major project, but I can see how he gave us the right contractor. I mean, everything all the way down the line, time after time after time. And uh, I, I even knew with the, the flooring people, one of the, one of the neatest things when, when there were the, the crew that were putting in the flooring, I walked in and they were playing Christian praise and worship music. Pretty neat, wasn't it? And I thought, boy, we every, everything, this, this is good, you know. Yeah. I, I had one time I was praying, I can't remember if it was an electrician, one of them went on to hard rock, and I went, Rrr. and I, after they left, I pleaded the blood of Jesus <laughs> and everything, but uh, guys, God God is up to something, and I, I want every one of us to be a part of it, and Father, I ask that you would give us the grace today, Father, give us that prophetic grace that came with Haggai to reestablish the priesthood, Father, give us the grace to be like Obed-Edom that in our homes and in our places of worship, that the Ark of the Covenant is reestablished, that your throne is established, that Jesus is really ruling and reigning, not in form, but in function. Father, let us not have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But Father, let us be truly a biblical people. Yes. That Jesus is our King, that we walk his commandments by the power of his Spirit, we're being led by his spirit, that we are disconnected from mystery Babylon. And that father bring us to the place to where we can flow in your power, not for our sakes or to ever make a name for ourselves, but to make the name of Jesus famous and respected once again in the earth. And we thank you. and We praise you for it in Jesus name. Hi friends, Pastor Mike Spaulding here to announce the Go Therefore 2022 conference. We are all witnesses to what has happened to America. Wickedness has overwhelmed our land. It is time for the body of Jesus Christ to come together and raise up the banner of our King. Now is the time for the Ecclesia to make our voice heard. We must bind the strong man in order to reclaim our land. Joining us this year to bring this much needed clarion call are the following speakers. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, James Spence, founder of Operation Heal America, Dr. John Diamond, host of America Unhinged on Brideon TV, Kenny C., host of The Rock with Kenny C., Derek and Sharon Gilbert, authors and hosts of award-winning programs on Skywatch TV and the PTL Network, Dr. Michael Lake, author of award-winning books, founder of Biblical Life College and Seminary, and host of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. David Hevner, author, accomplished filmmaker and producer, director of The Last Evangelist TV series. Carl Gallups, senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and a top 60 Amazon best-selling author. Casper McLeod, pastor of Upper Room Fellowship, author, songwriter, guitarist, and portrait artist. Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Rick Hidalgo from the C2K Report. They'll provide a timely teaching on the steps you must take to protect yourself and your family from Babylon. Coach Dave Daubenmeyer from Pass the Salt Ministries. Neil Peterson, pastor of Harvest Revival Center and current candidate for governor of Ohio. Tom Dunn through the Black Ministries. And of course, myself, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Registration is now open at the conference website, gothereforeconference.com. GoThereforeConference.com. Registration is still only $59. A recommended hotel is the Best Western Dayton Northwest in Englewood. The hotel is a short 20 minutes from the Dayton International Airport and the conference venue. Mention Go Therefore Conference for the special rate of $89. Book your rooms now as they will sell out. Go Therefore 2022 Conference, reclaiming the land, binding the strongman. I'll see you there. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God.
tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.